today on Santa Monica Update. Coming up next, while you're not supposed to be on your phone at school, the Santa Monica PD is giving students a free pass on this one. What's this I hear? There's a ski lift in Santa Monica? The Santa Monica History Museum could very well be Santa Monica's best kept secret. Stay with us and find out what you've been missing. We have these fun, interesting, and important stories along with more news about the city of Santa Monica in today's show. I'm Kina Chen. Santa Monica Update, your source for local news in Santa Monica. Santa Monica Update starts now. Hello everybody. Seismic retrofitting is one of those things many building owners just simply have to do. Because you know, lives are at stake. That's why the city is planning to launch the first phase of a new seismic safety program to address vulnerabilities within the city. This initial phase focuses on the creation of an inventory of buildings that may require seismic retrofitting. It will identify non-ductile concrete buildings and steel moment frame buildings. This will also help to identify other types of buildings requiring retrofit, such as unreinforced masonry buildings, concrete wall tilt-up buildings, and soft story structures. In addition, city staff will work closely with rent control staff on the rent control implications of building upgrades for affected buildings. The Santa Monica City Attorney's Office has filed a consumer protection lawsuit against Santa Monica-based precious metals dealer Seacoast Coin Inc., doing business as Merit Financial and Merit Gold and Silver. Merit is one of the nation's largest precious metals dealers. It advertises extensively, including on national TV. The lawsuit accuses Merit of a massive nationwide bait-and-switch scam. Merit advertises gold and silver bullion on TV, online, and in print ads at 1% over cost. The complaint alleges that when consumers call in to buy bullion, Merit salespeople allegedly use false, deceptive, and aggressive tactics to trick them into buying heavily marked up so-called collector coins instead. In fact, according to the complaint, the so-called collector coins being pushed by Merit have no advantage over gold or silver bullion. Merit is also accused of falsely gaining consumers' trust by saying that a co-owner of the company, Peter M. Epstein, is a police officer. The Santa Monica City Attorney's Office is continuing to investigate Merit. Anyone with information about its practices, including former customers and former employees of Merit, should contact the City Attorney's Consumer Protection Unit at 310-458-8336 or file a complaint online at gold.smconsumer.org. The City of Santa Monica presented the findings of the 2014 homeless count late last month. The total homeless count found 742 individuals, a 5% decrease from 780 in 2013. The street count was 346, a 9% decrease from 380 in 2013. And within the street count, individuals sleeping in vehicles and encampments numbered 57, an 11% decrease from 64 in 2013. No homeless families were identified on the streets, which is consistent with previous counts and is a unique feature of the homeless population in Santa Monica. The downtown area saw a significant 40% decrease from 141 in 2013 to 86 in 2014. For more information about the City of Santa Monica's action plan on homelessness, please visit smgov.net slash homelessness. Every now and then, kids see fellow classmates or friends doing something that maybe they really shouldn't be doing, but they don't want to tell anyone because they don't want to seem uncool. We've all been there. Well, the Santa Monica Police Department recently implemented the Text-A-Tip program into a handful of schools. It allows kids to step up and do the right thing while keeping their identities hidden. Greg Goldner has more. Santa Monica Police Officer Erica Aklufi is one of Santa Monica's school resource officers, and recently she spearheaded a new campaign that gives students a direct line to the police department. And one of the programs that we started this year is the Text-to-Tip program. It's a very simple program. It's aimed towards our high schoolers and middle schoolers here in Santa Monica, and it's basically uh, a texting-only tip line that uh, students can use to report things on campus that they think the police or one of their administrators ought to know about. Officer Klufi and her team have streamlined the program to make it as simple as possible for students to report something and then for action to be taken quickly. Each school has its own uh, dedicated line 
uh, for tips only. And when students see something like bullying or graffiti or fights or um, some not emergency, uh, non-emergency kind of thing, uh, they can just text to us and let us know what's going on and um, we can take care of it. From weapons and vandalism to fights or just suspicious activity, the goal of the tip line was to create a seamless and simple way for students to feel like they had an outlet to let somebody know that something wasn't right. The important thing that kids need to know about the line is that, that one, it is really easy. I mean, it just involves a text message, and two, it is confidential. So just like any other report to the police, uh, we don't divulge any of the kids' names that share things with us, and we can oftentimes take care of any kind of problems on campus without involving the student that reported it. <laughs> Oh my god, that's <laughs> horrible. Look, they just tagged up the side of that wall like that. It's such a nice place. You should text a tip. You know, you're right. I should. They got to do something about that. Let's see. There we go. Here, I'm going to go. Didn't text it. Let's yeah. go. While parents are always complaining about their kids being on their phones too much and texting way too much, the Santa Monica Police Department has now given kids a reason to text all the time. While the program's only been in place about six months, they've seen tremendous results. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Greg Goldner. While the program is still relatively new, it's been tremendously effective. The students seem to like the idea of being able to do the right thing while remaining anonymous. For questions about the text -a tip program or to find out more, head on over to the Santa Monica Police Department's website at santamonicapd.org. The Santa Monica Museum of Art recently held a We Heart Our Members Day, an entire day of free events exclusively for members. Reporter Tamara Henry was there to join in the fun. The Santa Monica Museum of Art is dedicated to ideas and creating exhibitions that enlighten, inform, and entertain, giving us a cozy and personal experience. The Santa Monica Museum of Art is, is its own independent um, Kunstale, which is a non-collecting museum on the premises here at Bergamont Station. Today, the members were treated with guided tours refreshments, and astrological and tarot card readings. The museum always has free parking. And what could be even better than that? The Santa Monica Museum of Art has been around for 25 years, but um, our future is very bright. We're excited. The Expo Line is going to be here in 2016, and Santa Monica Museum of Art has been named the anchor tenant for the redevelopment of Bergamot Station Arts Center. Soon we're going to get the train stop here. The metro is coming soon, and so we will have the great advantage of being a museum that connects the east side of Los Angeles with the west side. Kelty Ferris gives us all the elements of urbanism in unique brush strokes and vibrant colors. Then, Zyler Jane takes complicated numerical systems and makes them personal and lyrical, albeit they're based on strict math. What we have now are three exhibitions. We have two artists from the East Coast, one from New York, one who lives in Massachusetts. Both of them show New York in New York at very prominent galleries, and each is dealing with abstraction in a very unique and personal way. Then we have the transformative work of writer and poet Benjamin Weissman, joining forces with profound internationally acclaimed artist Yutaka Sohn. These local artists came together because of their mutual love for skiing. The ski lift was made with bicycle parts and a lawnmower motor. This exhibit is called what every snowflake knows in its heart. So all of these paintings that you see here are literally done together. One hand of one artist, the other hand of another artist. And kids and families got to use their hands to make their own art. Lots of fun. I even joined in to make my own City TV reporter stick puppet so I'd be able to take a ride on the ski lift. Now's your chance to hit the slopes. This exhibit runs through April the 5th. Reporting for Santa Monica Update, I'm Tamara Henry. The next magical event is Incognito on the evening of Saturday, April 26th. Tickets go on sale starting March 3rd at the website smmoa.org. For more info about exhibitions and programs, visit their website or call 310-586-6488. The Santa Monica History Museum is, without a doubt, one of the most important establishments in the city. It proudly exhibits Santa Monica's celebrated history. 
It's a place of learning, and according to reporter Gail Choice, it's also very entertaining. When people come to the museum, they come to discover and learn about the history of this beautiful city, how it all began, how it developed, and what it is now. Founded in 1975, the museum is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to collect, preserve, and make accessible the rich history of Santa Monica. We're in our changing exhibit room, and our current exhibit is the uh, Life at the Miramar. This profiles uh, the original mansion, the Miramar, that was built by uh, city co-founder John Percival Jones and it is right at Ocean Avenue and Wilshire Boulevard. Santa Monica's rich history is displayed in such a manner that with each exhibit, you want to step back in time. We deal with Santa Monica in the arts, uh, Santa Monica in the news, Santa Monica at work, and Santa Monica at, at play. And we have interactives in these different rooms. Here we have something that's called then and now. Be it fashion. This is a lovely gown of the time of the time period. You can see how it is really a silk gown with a with incredible hand and lace on it, which is uh, we don't see now and nowadays. But anyway, they'll be able to see here at the museums. Uh, we have quite a number of lovely textiles. Cutting edge technology. We have a tremendous collection of Douglas uh, items, uh, photographs. Um, many former Douglas workers have donated uh, to us. So, and it really runs the gamut from, from ball bearings and, and riveter guns to jewelry. Remember the Outlook newspaper? It's found a permanent home at the museum. This is Santa Monica in the news, and we received the Outlook newspaper archive when they closed operations in 1998. There's so much to see, learn, and do at the Santa Monica History Museum, keeping the city's history alive. Gail Choice, Santa Monica Update. The Santa Monica History Museum is located at 1350 7th Street on the same campus as the main branch of the Santa Monica Library. For more information on the Santa Monica History Museum, go to santamonicahistory.org or call 310-395-2290. The City Council is looking into the possibility of raising the hourly rate that city employees are paid to $15.37. This amount is a livable wage, according to Mayor Pam O'Connor. There will be more in this story as the Council begins the upcoming budget process. Now it's time for the part of our show which may be your first look at your next pet. Here's Mike Graham and Barbara Bishop with our Pet of the Week. Meet Mindy and Max, Santa Monica's Pets of the Week. Check out Mindy, a seven-month-old female calico short hair. She loves to cuddle, purr, and play. And this is Max, Minnie's brother, also a seven-month-old calico short hair. Both cats have warm personalities. They get along great with children and adults. Both cats are current on their vaccinations and have been spayed or neutered. If you're interested in either of these adorable cats or checking out others available for adoption, please visit the Santa Monica Animal Shelter located at 1649th Street. There are also dogs and turtles, a snake, parakeet, and a guinea pig, all waiting for their forever homes. Since our last segment, many of our animals have been adopted. Thank you very much for your support. See you next time. To find more pets like Max and Mindy, visit the Santa Monica Animal Shelter at 1640 9th Street. Well, that's it for this edition of Santa Monica Update. Please turn off your sprinklers when rain is forecast for Santa Monica. It'll save water, which you all need to do. I'm Keena Chin, speaking for all of us at City TV. Thanks for watching.